Thanks, Chris. Okay, let's go ahead and call this budget meeting to order. Thank you all for being here this evening. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a strange show, I'm sure, doing this virtually this time, but uh, we will all do our best to get our questions answered and information spread around the best we can. Um, first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance, and that's a little tough on the on the actual side here, so we'll acknowledge that and um, you know, kind of maybe say it all in our minds and, and keep on going here. So uh, responsibilities of the Budget Committee, is that Jared Deedy to kind of talk? the idea on that one yeah i can i can do that okay if you would please sir you got it so uh this is uh basically what the budget budget committee does um this is right out of the uh local budget law training book that they have um so the budget committee is convened to receive your budget budget document um, hear the budget message, hear and consider public comment, discuss and revise the budgets as needed, approve the budget, and approve the property taxes. Uh, so when you receive the budget, uh, it's a public document. Um, it's available. It's been available since noon on Friday. Um, the public has a, the right to inspect it. And, um, you know, I've already printed one copy. For Janelle, I can print copies for anybody who needs it. Um, Mr. Eberhard has prepared the budget message, which he'll give to you here in a little while. Budget message is uh, just a document that, or a, a letter kind of that explains the uh, budget, uh, describes our financial policies, explains any changes we have since last year, um, and he will be delivering it here in a little while. Public comment is going to be a little interesting since we're online. Um, people can email um, DD Corporating uh, to put in any public comments. She is monitoring that right now. Um, we will discuss and revise the budget. So if anybody has any questions, we'll try to answer all of those. Um, we should be able to approve the budget tonight if everybody's in agreement. Um, if not, we'll have to look at our next date, which I think is uh, like the second, second, right? second of June. Yeah. Um, and we'll do a motion to approve the uh, the tax levies that we have. So that's a quick rundown of what the budget committee is is uh, here for. Okay. Anybody have any questions or thoughts or look for any clarifications? Um, good time to ask any questions right now. Okay. Feel free to speak up, of course, anytime. Um, so, Jared, how does the certification of legal posting of a meeting? Yeah, we, so, uh, yeah, so what we did was, let me get there, I'll show you. Yeah, that's what you had in the back, the back of your book there, right? So it's yeah, book. it's uh, it's in the back of the thing, but, um, so we did it, put it in the paper, um, and so we have a copy of it of the paper. If you go to the website, you can get a copy of the budget. Um, and this is kind of <clears throat> a calendar where we talk about where it is. And then you can download a copy of the budget. And all the way towards the end down here is, uh, this is actually where it was in the paper. Um, and that was on Friday the 8th. And then it was in the uh, on the website also. So those are the things that we have to do. We'll get a, a, a notarized copy of the affidavit showing that it was done, but we don't don't have that yet. But it'll be in the final document that we have. Okay. Okay. So we're all proper in that respect as far as uh, yep. Making sure uh, legal meeting and legal budget process, right? Yep. Okay. Any questions or comments on that from anyone while we're in the spot? Okay, so perhaps my favorite part here, the election of the budget committee officers. So for those of you who are, uh, maybe haven't done this before or need a refresher, my, my recollection is, or please correct me if I'm wrong, that we'll need to right now elect a, a chair and vice chair of this budget committee. And that person then can 
kind of run the meeting a little bit and, and kind of take lead on uh, asking questions of the district staff and, and the district committee members. So, and that can be uh, any any at, member any member of the committee can be the, those two positions. Right. Good point. Okay. So I'd uh, open up for discussion here on nominations for committee chairman. I'd nominate Alan as the committee chair. I will second that nomination. Team player, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> You're just so good, Alan. Well, I'm sitting here uh, trying to do my best. Thank you. Uh, any other nominations? Uh, don't don't be shy. Okay, so uh, got one nomination on the table. So I guess we need probably do we need to go around and vote? Is that the way to do it? Yeah. Yeah, you should. Okay. Well, uh, sounds like yours truly, Alan Nidefer, has been uh, nominated for the budget committee chair. So let's um, go ahead and look for a vote, and I'll kind of go down the list here. Uh, Janelle, can you hear us? I think she may be occupied here. How about Julie? Yes. Catherine? Aye. Let's see. Jay? Aye. Janice? Aye. Lenora? Aye. Uh, Alice? Alice Farmer, you there? If you are listening, Alice, you're muted. Okay, we'll uh, move on with her. Who'd I miss? Anybody? I think that's what I see here. So it seems like the, the nomination has passed unanimously. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, how about a vice chair nomination? I'd nominate Catherine as vice chair. This is Julie. I second that. Thanks, Julie. Okay. Any other nominations? I'll nominate uh, Jay Trost. Oh, we got a Jay. I'll second Jay. We'll make it fair. Um, any other nominations? Okay. So we need to go. Proper procedure here, maybe Catherine and Jay. Do we need to go through twice, or do we just give each person the option of one or the other? Uh, well, I think because you've got a you have a second for J Jay, then that would be the one we'd automatically vote on. If we don't have a second for me, then we it does it dies. So we're good. No, Julie Rutherford seconded your. I think we had a second for. Me. Oh, she did. Okay, sorry about that, Julie. Yeah. I, I missed that one. Yeah, <laughs> then you just then you just go through both. Okay. Okay, so uh, hearing no other nominations, let's go ahead and um, call for a vote. So we're going to vote first on the nomination for Catherine. So on my list here, um, Janice. So we, are we saying a name, either Catherine or Jay? No, I'm, we're voting for Catherine. So uh, yay or nay for Catherine. If I vote nay for Catherine, I vote yay for, we only vote. One way or the oh, other? We'll go through twice. Yeah, one way or the other, exactly. Okay, nay. Okay. Uh, Janice, and then Jay? Aye. So you can keep track here. Lenora, it's for Catherine again. Nay. Julie? Yay. You can hear us, please. Oh, there you go. That's a, the positive, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, what am I missing? Alice just voted for Alice, Catherine. Can you hear us on this one? 
Well, she there was a text that said she voted for Catherine. Oh, there it is. I see that. Alice votes for Catherine. Got it. Okay, and then myself, I will say uh, yay for Catherine. So I think I got everybody if I'm looking at it right. Speak up if I missed anybody. Okay, so voting for Jay now. Yay or nay for Mr. Trost. Janice is a yay. Uh, Catherine. Yay. Lenora. Yay. Julie. Nay. And then Alice presumably is a nay since she already had one, right? And myself would be a nay. And then who else? Janelle, she's probably not online. Okay. So I think I got everyone, right? So by my math, Catherine wins by a vote. So congratulations. So if I'm for some reason unable to perform my duties, Catherine, I guess you're in. They will. Okay. Got that fun task out of the way. Um, presentation, the formal message and the detailed review of the budget. So I think Mr. Eberhardt, you probably get the honor of um, presenting your budget message here. Okay, thank you. First, first of all, I want to acknowledge the, the team that it took to put this together. This was a, a, a task that we did with, with very, uh, very clear understanding that the the waters beyond tonight would be would be different than what we thought tonight so i think the the administrators and and the team in the district office was very thoughtful on putting this together trying to to make sure that we put the district in the best financial position to move forward giving ourselves some options so uh with uh, with that i'll share this with you so this this budget message is generated in accordance with ORS 294401 and is and is submitted to the Brookings Harbor School District 17C Budget Committee and Board of Directors with the proposed 2021 budget. Part one of the message highlights budget planning put based on current parameters and measures we are taking to submit a balanced budget by June 30th, 2020. Part two of the budget mess of the message outlines unknowns that may impact the final budget beyond June 30th, 2020. Part one, current budget highlights and influences. Declining enrollment, the average daily membership ADM is the number of resident students enrolled in a school district. The state school fund bases its funding on those same students with additional weighting added for students in predetermined categories. ADMW. BHSD's estimated ADM for 2021 is 1515. The enrollment of Brookings Harbor School District has declined in 15 of the last 18 years. In 2002, 2003, there were 1,843 students, and in our current school year, we have 1,517 students, a difference of 326 students. The number of certified and classified staff, however, has not decreased. The number of staff in 2002-2003 was 218 and was 219 in 2019-20. Previous budgets, budgets have not fully addressed this dis disparity and this can no longer be ignored. May adjustment. Each year, our district must forecast the revenue collected in local property taxes and federal forest fees. Due to the 2018-19 local property tax and federal forest fee estimates being lower than were actually collected, the district had to pay back the state of Oregon for revenues received in these overpayments. These May adjustments are a normal part of the school funding process and can either, can either help the overall budget or create additional challenges. In our case, this is adding to our current budget challenge. Increase in salaries. In 2020-21, in in Brookings Harbor School District will enter into the second year of a two-year collective bargaining agreement with its certified and classified employees. The second year of the agreement guaranteed a 3% increase for classified and certified staff. This agreement was modified with, when a memorandum of understanding was entered into between Brookings Harbor School District and the Brookings Harbor Education Association in April of 2020. The MOU lengthened the workday for certified staff by 15 minutes, 
decrease the number of student teacher contact days by four and increase the number of professional development days by two for the 2020-21 count school year. This was done to align more with districts across the state. Despite fewer days worked and the over at work, the overall time certified staff will work increased. To remedy this, certified salaries will be certified salaries will be increased an additional one percent, now a total of four percent for the 2021 school year, for a total increase of six hundred and fifty thousand dollars for salary increases and benefits for all employees. Balancing the 2021 budget, due to our declining enrollment, we did not see an increase in general fund for the 2021 budget year. However, as a result of the aforementioned highlights and influences, we had to reduce our intended anticipated expenditures in 2021 by $1.1 million. To accomplish this, the district is doing the following. One, reducing certified and classified staff in the general fund across the district by approximately 10 FTE. This will be accomplished without laying off any existing staff members. Additional FTE was also moved out of the general fund to other sources of funding. Two, supplanting standard technology allocations with the CARES Act funding to be received in July 2020. These general fund technology dollars will need to be reallocated in the normal 21-22 budgeting cycle. Three, to increase carry forward in anticipation of the upcoming reduction in funding the district is negotiating a memorandum of understanding with the Brookings Harbor Education Association to enter into a work share agreement. The work share agreement will furlough all staff for six days between June 30th, uh, before June 30th, 2020. The anticipated increase of carry forward is $250,000. And I will share with you, we just passed the MOU, the union agreed to it, and we just in a special board meeting, we approved that. So that is in the books. Part two, unknown budget highlights and influences. Quarterly state economic forecast. On May 20th, 2020, the Oregon Office of Economic Outlook released its forecast, and due to the current pandemic state, uh, pandemic state tax revenues are significantly reduced. The Oregon legislature will soon meet in a special session to determine the actual funding levels for school district, which could be, be reduced between four to eight percent. Student investment account. At this time, any SIA dollars the districts may have planned to receive may not be realized or be severely reduced. If districts are awarded a portion of their SIA grant dollars, they must be utilized for expenditures that were related to their original SIA grant application. Federal CARES Act legislation. Brookings Harbor School District is eligible for resources from the Federal CARES Act legislation given to the state of Oregon and awarded to school districts based on a formula for allowable uses. Brookings Harbor School District's 2021 budget allowed for the CARES Act dollars to supplant our budgeted technology funds. Additional care, CARES Act dollars may become available when the scope of the pandemic's impact on the upcoming school year are more known. We're in very uncertain times and do not yet have enough information to predict what school might look like in 2021, nor the funding we'll, we will have to provide that education. The staff and community of Brookings Harbor School District are resilient and will meet the challenges and provide quality education to the students of our community. We look forward to working with the budget committee to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Chris. So, um, I guess we've got to be looking for any, again, as always, any questions or um, comments to Mr. Eberhardt's statement here and any clarification needed by anybody? Yeah, Chris, this is Jay. Uh, quick question on the bullet point of the reduction of the 10 FTEs. Now, it says that this isn't going to impact current employees. So <clears throat> how are we re how are we accomplishing that? I think I think when when uh, Jared Jared will talk more about that when you look at that because there is there we had staff that uh, some staff uh, left the district and we we move we were able to reduce a per, uh, for example in elementary we have an enrollment shift that's going through there so there were some staff that were moved to a different grade um, we did take uh, well there was there was a lot of maneuvering and I think I think Jared will explain that when he goes over those numbers with me because there, there's a lot to it. And I, I, we worked kind of 
kind of in a free agency way to make sure that we did not, at the end of the day, uh, lay anybody off. So, uh, because there's a lot of moving pieces, because there were many staff involved. Yeah, I, I, and I mean, I'm just forecasting how um, some of this rollout has occurred with CDC guidelines moving forward in uh, in different entities. And uh, it's almost as if they're requiring more resources, but providing less financial resource to that to accommodate, you know, additional monitors and additional staffing to be able to handle uh, the day to day, you know, insurance of six foot distancing or, you know, if kids aren't able to transition classrooms uh, without having the assistance, you know, whatever it might be whatever those guidelines might create, might create a bit of a paradigm where we're sitting on less resources, but more expectations. And I'm a little yeah, concerned. So, yeah, we totally get that. So what we, we knew that we had to submit a budget and had to be balanced by June 30th. Now, do we, do we think that it's going to change? It could very well change, but we feel really uh, positive that we were able to do this given our current situation, which in itself was, it forced us to reduce uh, um, expenditures without the COVID influence whatsoever. So that was the first task at hand was to balance the budget given our current parameters. Now moving forward, there are some unknowns, <clears throat> but we were able to somehow finagle, wouldn't finagle, but come up with some additional um, ending fund balance uh, uh, to help us out and also be thoughtful about anticipating some of the CARES Act money that we can move into the next budget year. So, yeah, and yeah. the and and the PILT payments you had mentioned on our PILT payments, <clears throat> how you know this year it created a bit of a crisis because there was some payback. Um, and I guess one thing I've always been curious about is why we don't budget for essentially a higher level of PILT, and and instead of putting it into personnel, put it into you know building and maintenance. And then we don't use it until we know because that, that mm. number never comes out until basically the last quarter. And then once we know what that number is, then at least if it's budgeted, we can use it at that time. And if it's not, if they reduce it, then we haven't spent it and it's not a big deal. Does that make sense? It's just hard because it, otherwise we'd have to come back in the budget. We'd have to do a supplemental and then we'd have to add it in. And I'm sure Jared knows the whole process. But I've always wondered why we don't budget for the PILT. And then, you know, just kind of hold off until the fourth quarter when we know what that number is. Yeah, we 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 should be. So, I mean, I'll, let me just explain kind of um, how that works. So um, the the school, I mean, the ODE comes up with something that's called the state school fund formula. And so they say, you know, we're going to have nine billion dollars for the biennium and we're going to split it. Forty nine percent of that nine billion is going to be spent in 1920. And, you know, the second part is going to be spent in 2021. So they have you estimate what your local tax is going to be. Okay. And then they basically take that off of what they say they're going to give you. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we underestimate on our property taxes, then they're giving us more money than we really should get because, um, when we actually collect the tax and we collected more than we estimated, they've kind of overpaid us. So they decide, okay, well, you didn't tell us you were getting this much money, so we're taking this money back. The problem is it always happens in May of the next year. So right. this May adjustment is actually for the 18-19 year. So we underestimated our property taxes in 18-19, and we end up having to pay it back in 1920. So my, uh, you know, my approach is to overestimate property taxes rather than underestimate because if we overestimate and um, when that, you know, may adjustment happens, um, we will actually have collected less than we told them we were going to. So they would owe us money instead of us owing them money. I mean, and in, a, in a perfect world, they would be even and we would, nobody would be doing any adjustments, but that's not how, right. you know, crystal balls work. So. And I'm and I'm talking about the PILT payment, the the payment in lieu of taxes for it basically it was labeled as the forest fee, the forest fund fee. You know, yeah. that's that's the PILT payment that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, yeah. 
And and for so for 17, 18, for some reason we 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 didn't estimate any, and we got two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And then for eighteen, nineteen, we estimated thirty thousand. Now we got two hundred sixty thousand. So I I don't know why those were estimated so so low. Yeah. Um, I'm estimating them at, at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So good because I mean it seems like that's a pretty good average. And it's in the been that way for five or six years, yeah. So I don't know why we wouldn't continue until we don't get that money. Right. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you did that because, yeah, I felt like we always left it all on the table by not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jared. Yep. I had a question regarding just playing off of what uh, Jay talked about. Um, so he mentioned the CARES money. Is that, Chris, what I hear you saying is that it's going to be limited to technology for the school district, or is that, you know, if we end up needing more personnel to meet certain guidelines, is that money, <coughs> can we end up using it for that? I mean, or is there limitations? Is that yeah, there, you, um, there's a, actually a, a ton of stuff that you can use that money for, um, and I'm sharing the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, that, that money can be used. They have a whole list of stuff that, that the feds, um, said we could use it for. Currently we're going to get, I'm estimating about $443,000 with that money. Um, so I'm taking 240,000 of it and using our technology because that is one of the things that, that we can do. The other $200,000 is up for grabs and, um, you know, Mr. Marshall and Chris and I have been discussing about, you know, using that for salaries next year. So that would definitely be something that we could do. So, you know, if, if we're right now, the state, you know, the initial thing was eight and a half percent across the state, which was about one point two million dollars. So if we're down one point two million dollars next year, we have two hundred thousand dollars from the CARES Act. And then we have another two hundred fifty from the furlough days this year. So that's four hundred fifty thousand dollars that we should be able to put directly into salaries to to help that deficit for next year. When okay, I guess I'm not quite understanding. So it's right now that CARES money is not budgeted. Budgeted is that correct? No, it's in the budget. It's fund number two five seven. So there's four hundred forty three thousand dollars budgeted. Two hundred forty thousand of it is budgeted for hardware, and then the other two thousand is budgeted in salaries and purchase services. Okay, so then basically we wouldn't have additional funding if needed for additional personnel. Right yeah, now, it's me. Oh, we could we could take the two hundred thousand out of there that we're not using on hardware and use it for um, personnel. Got it. Okay, and are you going to explain the how the that FTE? Because I, I first of all, I appreciate not laying off employees, but I'm also mindful that ten FTE positions not coming back to the school district next year, depending on, you know, where those play. And I, I just, as I just would like to have a sense of what that's going to look like because that's going to, that will be an extra burden on our staff. And obviously there's nothing we can do about it, but I think it's something that we should be mindful of um, given that we just don't even know what um, school is going to look like this come this fall. Yeah. So Jer are you going to explain that Jared? Yeah, I can do that right now. Okay. All right, so can everybody see the budget document, the expenditure by function summary on your screen? Yes. Yep, okay. So this is um, how each function has changed um, from last year to this year. So I'll just kind of run down and, and hit the big highlights of, of where the FTE is now. So in uh, the elementary FTE, we're, we're down quite a bit. We have four FTE that we, um, we are down in that function. So three classroom teachers um, have, you know, moved on or, or whatever they're going to do. And we, uh, Helena has said that she can kind of shift some things around and she can do without those th three classroom teachers. And it's not going to hurt the... Uh, the class sizes, maybe one more, but but not much. And then um, with the whole pandemic, Title I has kind of eased up on some of the restrictions that they have. And so we were able to move our 
RTI teacher that we have now um, out of the general fund and into Title I money. So that's four FTE that we're, we're kind of uh, getting rid of there, but we're not laying anybody off. Um, at the high school, we had uh, a teacher resign. Um, we have another full FTE that I was able to move into Measure 98 um, funds. And then we did, we are eliminating two positions. Uh, the administration um, decided that they were okay eliminating our accompanist and also our certified librarian. And so both of those people have been with the district a long time. They, they're um, able to work in other places. So we're just going to involuntarily transfer them to other positions. So they won't lose any pay or any benefits. They'll just be working in a different position. So we're able to, to reduce that FTE without reducing the actual person. Um, and then we are not hiring our behavioral specialist in um, SPED. So that's another FTE there. And then mm -hmm. in Alt-Ed, um, the, the secretary resigned in Alt-Ed. And so um, Ms. Veritek has uh, decided she's going to revamp some of her secretarial staff. And so they will be um, taking on more, but, but, uh, but there will not be a, a, a risk there. And then the other one we did earlier in the year in the superintendent's um, function, we uh, rift our receptionist. That was back in August, though. So we haven't had it the whole year, but it was in the budget for last year. So we're not doing that. Um, Jared, before you go too far, it just looking, can you go back up to the previous page? Sure. And I'm just curious, um, the cuts to the elementary, middle school, and high school don't look proportional to their overall budget. Um, and I'm wondering. Yeah, that, well, the elementary school is losing the most certified FTE, and that's why. So when you, the, the elementary or the middle school is only losing the, the accompanist um, position works for the middle school and the high school. Um, only like 0.11 of her FTE is actually out of the middle <clears throat> school. So most of her FTE is out of the high school. So, but when you're talking about certified and classified staff, there's, there's kind of a, a big difference between costs for those things. So in the elementary, there's four certified FTE that are gone. And at the high school, there's only one certified FTE Actually, there's two. I'm sorry, because we moved some to the to Measure 98 also. So that's the real difference. We didn't lose any certified FTE at the middle school, so there theirs didn't drop hardly at all. I think I think Jade Jay, Jay answered maybe your question too early in this process. The administrators asked for and Jared provided with a classroom teacher student ratio kind of formula, and we feel with even with these staffing changes, we are within. What are what are really pretty favorable student teacher ratios k-12 so even though we're moving some things around for example we have a big class in fourth grade that's moving to fifth grade we're making adjustments there we we feel very conf confident in our student teacher ratio throughout the district it's not like we're really creating weak areas at, at anywhere in our in our in our education system here Okay. Yeah. It just, it just hit me as not very, it just wasn't proportional. And so, you know, I was thinking, well, if we're just, you know, obviously taking the, the low hanging fruit, not rehiring positions that uh, were vacated, does there, do we need to reallocate resources to those vacated areas from places that may, um, like you just said, have, um, yeah, I would. And we did one thing we did then and, and, um, Ms. Sharon did this in the in her in her building was she was able to add an SEL position within her building as well. And I think that was a, a, a real big win to be able to provide some of those services in her building that we had wanted as part of our 
student investment account and she was able to uh, move and some FTE around and we are able to now have the SEL position filled in there and we I, I believe we just hired somebody for that. And that's okay. not getting paid for out of general fund, it's getting paid for out of Title One money. So that's uh, that's a good thing. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um I see the uh, reduction in alternative ed. Um, have we seen, are, are we seeing numbers reduced there or will the demand be the same um, with less resources? I mean, yeah, that so reduction, we, oh, go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead, Jerry. Oh, go ahead, Chris. It's okay, go ahead. That that reduction, Jay, is not in a in a in a, in a teacher. That reduction is in a, in the support staff. So we still have the same uh, FTE and an actual certified teacher working there. That's what Jared said. Miss Veritech is working a little bit differently to 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 create some different staffing situations on her support team of of classified folks. So we're not losing any instructional uh, uh, strength in that area at K twelve. Okay. Thank you. Jared, I have a question for you. On my email with the, um, this page shows that the adopted is, they're a year off. Yeah, um, in, the, in the one that I emailed out, uh, I neglected to change those on my spreadsheet. So Mr. Everhart caught that as soon as I emailed it to him. So I went in and, and actually fixed the one that's online. So this is, we're looking at the document that's online for everybody to, to pull right here. So Okay, so all the numbers are the same? It, it's fixed, yeah. All the numbers are the same. They didn't. Yeah, all the numbers are the same. The only thing change is, is the dates because those are I didn't I didn't change those dates. So. All right. Thank you. Yeah. No, that was a good catch. Okay. I I had this is Catherine. I just had one last question. I saw that there was a significant amount of money um, from high school special programs, about two hundred and fifty thousand, and then I guess there's some from the middle school. Can you just sh share with us what that looks like? What that's translating to? in terms of reduction, what that, where is that, what does that mean? What programs are not going to be, um, I don't know, you know, do you understand what I'm yeah, asking? The, the, the 200,000, the high school. What, sorry. what function yeah. are, we, are we talking about? Um, well, 11, 1131, I think she means, 205. Yeah, so, so just high school? Yeah. Yeah, so we had uh, a certified teacher that uh, resigned that we are not replacing. Um, I was able to move um, a whole FTE out of um, 1131 into the Measure 98 money. Um, so that saves money there. And then we are uh, doing the involuntary transfer on the uh, accompanist. So those are those are reasons that that number is is where it is. So we're really only losing you know, one FTE of certified staff that um, Ms. Veritek uh, said she could absorb, so. Is, is that um, particular individual, um, were they in an elective um, role or were they in a, um, one of the main subjects? Um, no, they were in a core position. They were in a core position, and yeah. and that that uh, was like like Jared said, there was no significant reduction in the class sizes, and Not that was high. that was something that we were able to to absorb. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So I think I think it hit um, all the major ones where we had uh, had some differences. So. Psychological services, Jared, twenty one forty. We added a bunch there. Yeah, we were person. we were really under budget last year. Um, what what we tried to do with uh, with our school psych this year is we uh, we asked the ESD if they could find us a school psych so we could have someone on on site. Um, what what we have with our school psychologist right now is they're online. So we have to have um, an IA there in the room running, you know, the, the right. computer and that kind of stuff. So what we had thought was if we get someone here, then we could, you know, put that IA doing something else. 
Um, last year, we were way under budget. We only budgeted $80,000 for the school site last year, and it really cost us about $140,000. So we were, we were way under budget there. We had, the ESD had some on the line. Um, they actually were set to come down a couple of weeks ago and take a tour of the uh, facility, meet with um, Ms. Crum and some of these, uh, the SPED people. And then um, that person backed out on about three days before they were supposed to get here. Um, their spouse apparently got transferred somewhere and they wanted to stay on the I-5 corridor. So mm -hmm. we did not uh, get that as we thought we were going to get. So um, we're going back to the same person that we have been uh, contracting with for the last three, four or five years, but we were just way under budget last year. So one thing I, I wanna disclose is there there is a change of, of programming, computer programming at the high school that will not be offered next year. Now, I think also mentioned in my remarks is that if we do receive any student investment account dollars uh, um, to a certain degree that we feel we with confidence uh, add possible positions, there are some possible possibilities that since we heard that electives were an area of growth, that is a place that we could very possibly uh, maybe add some some instruction in but at this time it was absorbed but we have some other programming i think that will cover up and be not cover up we'll be able to take some other cte offerings for students uh, because that like i said that's the only place that we actually reduced the programming option was that computer programming and that was because the staff member who did uh, you actually signed a uh, year for that person to pursue other educational interests that's the only reason that position was then eliminated or was temporarily eliminated <laughs> so that kind of extent to your your dive in there, Jared? Or you... Yeah, I mean, I, unless anybody has any other questions, um, one thing I I can talk about actually a couple things, I guess. Um, so. That's kind of the general fund. When we're talking about special revenue fund, revenue funds, everybody wants to know about the SIA, and everybody wants to know about um, the state school fund. So, first thing that we can look at here is just the state school fund um, forecasting. So, if we talk about um, you know an eight and a half percent reduction which is about 656 million dollars um, coming off of the state school fund next year we're looking at a 1.3 million dollar reduction in our rate. so we're budgeting at the number that you know they told us in February but we know that with everything that's going on um, you know, we're, we're never going to get that revenue. So right now, you know, at the eight and a half percent that the the governor said that she was going to reduce the the entire state budget, we're looking at a one point three million dollars. Um, I know COSA and OSBA has come out with some other numbers that are, are down a little bit, maybe about four hundred and fifty million, four hundred and sixty million, something like that. So we're going to be, you know, anywhere between. 700 to 1.1 million dollars down next year and nobody knows what that number is because uh, the legislature is the one that actually has to, to come to session and uh, decide who's getting cut and who isn't getting cut so this budget is you know we're, we're basing it on our original projections um, because we want to have spending authority to spend whatever money we do have um, once you know July or August gets here and they, the legislature actually meets and decides what they're going to do. They'll tell us exactly how much money we're going to get. And that's when it's going to get really hard, really fast because we won't have the money that we think we're going to have right now. So state school fund is probably going to be down anywhere from 800 to probably $1.1 million. Um, 
And then when we look at the SIA money, um, we were originally supposed to get about $1.1 million in SIA money. Um, so we had to put in our, our SIA plan, which called for, I don't know, seven or eight FTE. We were going to hire some elective teachers at the junior high. We are going to hire an SEL person. We were going to hire, um, you know, some more teachers at the elementary school to do PE and art and music. And, um, and all of that stuff has gone by the wayside. Uh, the governor basically said, don't hire anybody based on your SIA money because we really don't know how much is, we're going to have there. So right now, um, you know, they're thinking that it's going to be about 37% down, but again, nobody really knows. So our original um, estimate was about 1.1. I mean, if we only get 25% of that SAA money, we'll be sitting at around $300,000. Uh, the good thing about the SAA plan is that we had to budget things and plan for three years out. So if there are things in our year two and three budget that don't include people and we can pull those forward and do some things as far as facilities go or technology or things like that, um, we can get that approved to spend that money on. So right now it's budgeted, you know, way up here, but we know we're not going to get that money. So, um, you know, we're not going to hire anybody right now um, until we know exactly how much SA money that we're going to have. Um, so those two things are, are the real big ones. The measure 98 is the other thing, the high school success act. Um, the high school success act is funded 50% through the general fund. And then the other 50% comes from a couple of different places. But one of the places it's coming from is the, um, the Student Success Act, the SSA. So that's the cat tax that, that we're talking about. That's the same place this SIA money comes from. So if that money is down, we don't think that Measure 98 will be funded fully also. So in, we budgeted for full um, funding on Measure 98, but the only thing that is in there staff-wise is 50% because we're that's what um, is coming out of the general fund. So anything above 50% is just things like supplies and upgrades to facilities and things like that. So even if we just get 50% of our Measure 98 funding, we'll be able to pay the people that we have in there. So those are the, the three big things. So what is the process then? I think the legislature's meeting, what, in June sometime? Is that what I read? Um, or whenever it is. And then if, presuming they do announce some sort of uh, reduction in funding, do we need, what is the process then for us? Do we have to come back with a new budget or? No, we, we wouldn't have to come back with it for a new budget unless they actually gave us more money. Because if, if we approve the budget based on the projections that are original projections, then, you know, we're, what, what the budget is, it gives us appropriation authorities to, to spend money on up July to, 1st, yeah. right? And so we can spend up to whatever the budget is. We can't spend more than that. Right. And so if we want to change any of those, um, you know, major functions, um, if there's a change by 10% or more, um, you know, if you get more revenue than, than 10%, then you have to come back and do a supplemental budget. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, I, I, I don't ever see that happening for next year for sure. So <laughs> basically it's just kind of going to be one of those things where we got to watch it, um, you know, and, and really, we're not going to know what we can do until the legislature does come together and then the state, you know, figures out the ratios and, and what the state school fund is going to pay and all that stuff. I did talk to the county assessor um, up in Gold Beach about our property taxes to make sure I was on the same page with him about what he thought we were going to to get. And he doesn't think that we're going to have a reduction in our property taxes because most people pay their property taxes with their mortgage it's kind of you know in there so they're paying it every month and so he says that they haven't really seen a significant drop in property taxes you know when something happens so i think we're going to be okay there but the state school fund is going to be the one that's really going to take the hit mm -hmm. and yeah we won't know until the legislature comes in because the governor has the authority to cut the entire state budget um, so she just said eight and a half percent over the entire state budget, but she can't, you know, 
give money to more to one person and take less than, uh, from somebody else, the legislature has to do that. Right. And Jared, could you speak to the one position you didn't maybe mention specifically, and that was the activities athletic director, how that worked into the budget yeah, reduction? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I did not mention that. We're, we're not hiring our athletic director. That would be in um, function 20, 20, uh, I don't know, 24, 10 probably, I think is where it is. Um, it's in with the principals. So that, uh, that position we decided not to hire because of um, the big reduction that we are going to have. Uh, any questions about anything? Yeah, I think this is kind of the discussion or question portion of the evening here. So, um, committee members, what else can you throw at Jared or Chris? Question is, um, will the athletic director duties look the same as they did this year then? Yeah, so we're basically, we're basically, um, I believe that, uh, that, that um, Shearer is going to be the uh, assistant again, and so she'll take care of scheduling and things like that. So um, Ms. Veritek has assured us that everything will be good and she can handle, handle everything. everything. So, so. How will you be How covering you the duties of the certified librarian position that you eliminated? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the, the first part of your question. Um, you guys mentioned that you eliminated the certified librarian position, I think, at the high school. So how are those duties going to be covered? Yeah, so we have a, uh, a classified person in every library, and then we have, uh, you know, another, uh, the this, this certified person who kind of oversees all of those people. So we still have someone in every library doing the same thing they did last year. Um, so those that that uh, position of duties will just kind of get farmed out to the principals of those buildings. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, is there any public comments, Didi or Jared, that you've seen come through? I haven't uh, seen anything on my end at all. I don't have any. I don't know if Dee Dee has any. I don't. Any. Nope. Nope. Not any other. Nothing all right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Seems like we're kind of getting our questions answered here. Don't don't hear a flurry of uh, trying to stump Jared questions here. <laughs> well, I would uh, perhaps deposit the thought here of um, looking for a motion to adopt the budget that's been presented to us here tonight. Okay, so I um, I have kind of what the um right what they should say i can email them to somebody so they can actually make the motions if you would like or how would you like me to do that so, so i just i just somebody. email them to jay and, and Catherine. so if one of you guys could check your email real quick um then you have the actual motions that we need to work on and I can present those on the screen too so everybody knows what what they are if you want to yeah I want you to do that please okay yeah oh okay I, I just for a second I didn't have the evil I have it now okay so basically, we need we need two motions to approve the budget. Well, we need one motion to approve the budget in total. Um, so the total budget um, is thirty one million four hundred twenty eight thousand one hundred twenty thousand dollars. And then the second motion, or the you know the second 
we don't have to do those in two stages, but the second one is to actually um, assess property taxes this year. Um, the property tax rate is 3.2494 per thousand, and that's um, a fixed rate. That doesn't change every year. We can, um, we can assess less than that if we want to. I don't know why we would want to, but we could. Um, but we can't assess more than that uh, $3 number right there. Um, so that's what we would have to do for the assessed value on property taxes. And then um, we're going to need $1.184 million for our general obligation bond, which will be over this year. So this is the last year of our, of our general obligation bond. I, uh, Jay and Jay, um, Janice, I just texted you, screenshotted you the two different motions. Would you guys get those? Sorry, I'm I'm trying to do this on my phone, so it's hard to jump back and forth. Got it. I can see it on my screen. Yeah, they're on the screen, so if somebody just oh, wants to okay. use it, it's on All the right. screen. Okay. Yeah, I can. I move that the Budget Committee of Brookings Harbor School District approve the budget as presented for the 2020-2021 fiscal year in the amount of $31,428,120. Thanks, Janice. I'll second that. Thank you, Jay. Uh, any questions or uh, discussion on this motion we have in front of us? Okay, uh, let's go down the list here for a vote then. Um, Alice, if you can hear us, are you there? She might text it in, so we'll hold on that. Uh, Janice? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Jay? Aye. Julie? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Lenora? Aye. And I from Alan. I think I got everyone. Oh, I got something from Alice here, I think. Alex says I, or Alice, excuse me, says I. Okay, so we have passed the, through the budget. All right. We're looking for the second motion here. I move that the Budget Committee of Brookings Harbor School District approve property taxes for the 2021 fiscal year at the rate of $3.00. And twenty four cent twenty four ninety four per hundred per thousand of assessed value for the permanent rate tax levy in the amount of one million one hundred eighty four thousand two hundred and thirty dollars for the general obligation bond levy. Thank you, Jay. This is Lenora. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Lenora. Any discussion or questions on the motion we have before us on the bond levy? Okay, let's look for a vote then. So, Alice, I'll put you on the spot for your text. And then, oh, that was quick. She says yes. Thank you. Um, Janice. Aye. Janelle. Aye. Jay. Aye. Julie. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Lenora. Aye. And I as well. Okay. Well, that seems to be the last item on my agenda. So it does. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's uh, help that uh, was here tonight. Uh, it's a big deal trying to get this done. So thank you very much for taking the time to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah. Likewise, me too. Appreciate everyone's time and attention and um, we will soldier on here. So thank you all very much. Okay. Bye everybody. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.